Many of you may remember a time when you first looked at a small motor extracted from a toy and thought, what if I stick a few of these on a toy wagon or a trolley? I might be able to make a go-kart or what if I stick a small propeller on this motor and I might be able to make a little helicopter. Some of us even dared to dream of having our very own flying machine using lots and lots of these tiny motors with propellers. So when the YouTubers from Germany that maintain the channel, the real life guys, uploaded their video in which they flew their bathtub to the local bakery and back, it was an instant hit. Not only was it awe-inspiring, but it showed that technology has reached a level where our childhood ambitions can finally come true. In this video, we are going to explore multi-copter or multi-rotor type aerial vehicles and what design principles can help us to improve them. Or in other words, how can that bathtub flying machine be made to go further? On this channel, we explore the technology behind the modern electric aircrafts. Subscribe to get all of our latest updates. Now, the multi-copter vehicles have been the choice of many engineers and hobbyists for making their own flying machines, particularly since quadcopter drones arrived on the scene. The advantage that quadcopter drones have is that their electrical controls take out the complexity one encounters in a mechanical system for even a simple task as changing the speed of the rotor blades. Drones also have a little computer at the helm that takes reading from the accelerometers and the gyrometers several times a second and directs each motor independently and precisely to spin at the required calculated speed. This achieves a level of stabilization in hovering that has never been possible before. So it was natural for people to think of scaling up this drone technology to a level where it could fly a person. Many of them did succeed and were able to hover with it but one thing they weren't able to scale up was the flight time. And this brings us to design principle number one. That is, when scaling up any object, the area increases by a square, but the weight increases cubically. Or in other words, doubling the size of a drone does not double its payload capacity with the same flight time. To elaborate, imagine that there is a drone that has a weight of 2 kilograms. If we double the size of the drone, we would have to double the size of everything from the rotor blade size to the frame. In that case, the weight of the drone would not just double to be 4 kilograms, but instead it will be 8 kilograms. This is because the weight depends upon the material volume, which increases in all three dimensions as compared to the area, which only increases in two dimensions. So you can imagine that if your 2 kilogram drone had one lithium ion battery pack that gave you a flight time of 8 minutes, then your upsize drone with two battery packs would give you a flight time of much less than 8 minutes because of the higher weight that will have to be countered by the additional thrust. So from this example, it is very clear that why scaling up a drone won't give you the same flight time that you witness in its smaller counterpart even if you scale up the battery size in the same proportion. But there's another problem at hand here, which is that most drones don't have great flight times to begin with. Why is this? To understand, we'll have to look at the second principle of design, which explores the relationship between lift force and required power for various types of aircraft. Hovering is the most power intensive mode of flying compared to all others. To elaborate by the way of example, Let's look at different aircrafts and their power requirement to generate lift. In an airship, the lift force comes from the buoyant force of the lighter gas and therefore we don't have to invest any power to get lift. This makes the airship one of the most energy efficient way of air travel. Next, we have the aircrafts that used fixed wing lift. We get lift automatically just by moving forward in a fluid medium. The amount of lift depends upon the size of the wing and the angle at which it intercepts the fluid. But the only power required is for moving forward at a certain speed. So one can design wings that can produce enough lift with minimal power requirement. In a glider, we can soar without spending any power at all. But for most aircrafts, for higher speed, maneuverability and practicality, we do use a propulsion system. So, in both the aircrafts that we looked at, namely airship and fixed wing, lift was generated automatically without spending any power or spending very little power. Now we come to hovering. 
This requires a high amount of power because we generate lift by pushing down the air. This is the least energy efficient method of generating lift. And this is the reason why flight times on a quadcopter drone is much less compared to a fixed wing model plane powered up by the same battery. Therefore, multi-copter aerial vehicles like the Volocopter have low flight times because of the inefficient way the lift is generated. The question is now, can we improve this method? And if so, then how? Well, we can immensely improve the flight times if we understand our third principle, which is that power consumption can be lowered if the required thrust can be achieved with lower velocity of air that is being pushed down. So, for example, if I need to generate 10 newtons of thrust, then I can generate this by either pushing 1 kilogram of air out of my thrusters or propulsor every second while keeping the air exit speed at 10 meter per second, or I can push out 10 kilograms per second of air with a speed of 1 meter per second. Doing the latter will cost me 100 times more power. We can increase the mass of the air being pushed out by increasing the size of the rotor blades while we can increase the speed of air being pushed out by spinning the rotor blade faster. If we do the latter, we end up consuming much more power. Using this principle of pushing high mass of air at low speed rather than small mass of air at high speed, we have designed personal carrying multi-copter that can hover with just enough power that can be generated by human limbs. Note that an athlete is capable of generating power of up to 1000 watts in short bursts and maintains 600 watts of power for extended periods. So even with power less than what is used by your electric kettle, we have been able to get a person airborne. The Aerovelo Atlas was one of the aircrafts to achieve this feat. It employed four massive rotor blades. The idea was to push higher mass of air at slower speed to achieve lift just by human power. Interesting to note that the person powering it wasn't just able to lift himself, but also the whole aircraft which had a weight of 55 kilograms. Needless to say that although this aircraft did demonstrate minimal power requirements for hovering, but it wasn't very practical. The learning outcome from this aircraft is that the longer the rotor blades, the lesser the power needed and on the flip side, the highest amount of power is consumed when less mass of air is being pushed out, but is being pushed out at very high speed. So let's go back to our bathtub example mentioned earlier in the video. It had six rotor blades, three on each side of the pilot. The design could be improved just by using four rotors with larger blades. This would increase the flight duration significantly. In the last decade, we have seen the emergence of hovering bikes like the Aero X. They have two rotor blades, which in terms of hovering efficiency are much better compared to four or six. The two rotor blade design though, does not give any literal flight stability. And therefore, newer designs are looking at having at least three rotor blades for better control and stability. For high hovering efficiency, a parameter called disc loading is often cited. The principle behind it is the same. The larger the total area covered by the rotor blades, the lesser the energy used by the aerial vehicle. So yes, helicopters are best in this regard. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you.